I think I have a pointer right here. Now would be a good time. I hear it. <laughs> we, don't, we don't only do cameras, we only, don't only do software, we also do equipment. This is a bomb disposal uh, robot that's utilized by the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's able to uh, you know, remotely go into locations that cannot be gotten into. Uh, again, this is just a long laundry list of equipment that we've been able to purchase throughout the year. There's not a diver that goes in the water uh, to recover an individual or rescue an individual that's not utilizing our equipment or wow. equipment that we assisted in them being able to purchase. Same thing with the bomb squad, being able to purchase this type of equipment to respond to it. Uh, he does have a bite. Uh, he can be armed with a 12-day shotgun and actually you know, take care of the situation or be able to uh, deliver an actual explosive device. As Jared would say, the boys with their toys. <laughs> Very good. Uh, any great presentation. Thank you, Mr. Hurry. Any comments? Uh, uh, first, uh, thank Ken Hearn because without him, none of this would ever be possible. I mean, the millions of dollars that we've gotten um, is, is all on his shoulders. He basically went out on all this money for us, and uh, I just want to thank him. And he probably doesn't get enough credit, but I'm glad he did this because everyone needs to know basically he's the one that's done this. And remember, um, we have not taxed the uh, residents of the Port District in the last, you know, 35, 40 years. So all these millions and millions of dollars that have gone to provide safety for the Palm Beach County residents have been done without one penny of tax, and, and Ken's the guy that really has done the, the whole job himself. So I want to thank you uh, very much. Thank you. I won't be as eloquent as uh, Commissioner, but I would also like to thank you and have you know that your uh, efforts are appreciated. Good job, Ken. Thank you. Security technology for access control camera systems and data uh, require regular maintenance and repair. Uh, NEO Systems is experienced in both uh, Pelco CCTV and uh, Vigilant Access Control. Actually, they helped us install it for the uh, Command Bridge project, uh, currently being utilized by the port. Uh, our current supplier, uh, <coughs> IFSS, uh, failed to meet expectations uh, of myself as well as several other people on staff. Uh, their bill rates were, you know, what, what they did was they came, came in built uh, with a low bill rate, but then they brought two people in at a time to punch that up. Uh, kind of what the straw that broke the camel's back is they, two people spending three and a half hours to work on a project until I started asking them about it. And then it was identified that all you had to do was click a box in a uh, software program. So we spent over $300 for them to learn. Uh, I don't really like paying people to learn. I pay them to know what they're supposed to do and get it done. Um, port staff seeks to enter into agreement with NEO Systems, uh, who knows the system, um, in compliance with our procurement process. And at what rate? It's at $75 an hour, but it's one person. And it gets it done. And um, how much 
how was this um, new vendor chosen? Uh, it's Alfonso. He's been around. Uh, he actually uh, was with uh, GE for a period for facility for Picture Perfect Facility Commander. Uh, we're just familiar with his work, and basically asked him to come help us out. I trust your judgment, but I think it's good public policy whenever we can to do a formal um, either bid or an RFQ or an RFP. So we. Um, Competition is good and transparency is good. Commissioner, I, I totally respect that. Uh, we've done that for uh, several years. Uh, we did it with Royal Asset Security. We did it with IFSS. Uh, we've tried. Uh, we end up with the lowest bid, and we've been disappointed on each and every count in relation to that area. And the safety, in the area of uh, sensitivity of security that this is, we need to make sure we got something we can hit a home run for us every time. So, Mayor, is this in keeping with our, our current policies? Is this what is, is this action in keeping with our current policies? That is correct. Yes. Okay. But uh, Commissioner MacArthur, I think we all agree in general, this seems to be a unique, unique situation. Unique is yes. yes, the best way to describe it. Right, thank you. Are you okay with that, Commissioner? Yes, sir. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curry. Um, <clears throat> so we pulled. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda minus E11? I move. Hey, thank you. A motion has been made and probably seconded to approve the consent agenda minus E11. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries unanimously. We'll now go to the Good afternoon, commissioners. At the July meeting, the board or the board authorized staff to advertise for the million and baby project. We have four areas out on the port that, that the pavement's getting kind of beat up a little bit. We mill it off and bring it back up to um, elevation because a lot of them are, it doesn't drain quite right anymore. Yeah, I see that. We did have a, uh, a pre-bid meeting and we did advertise. We received four bids. The low bid was Ranger Construction at $78,128. This is all based on unit prices. They have to mill off so many so much area will measure up that area when it's done they'll get paid by their unit price the unit prices are on the, the second page of the uh, <coughs> item. i'll make a motion that we accept ranger construction not only were they a low bidder but they're a quality company and they've done great work here before so that's my motion to accept ranger construction second and motion has been made and probably seconded all those in favor please say aye aye opposed Nine motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, Executive Director's report. Thank you, Commissioner. Before I begin, I'd like to introduce Karen Emery. Karen, you here? All right. Thank you. Karen Emery uh, will be is my executive assistant. She will be providing support for all of our senior management uh, level on this explorer. So let me start from here. New voice. That's Karen. She'll just associate the name. <laughs> okay, so if I'd like to then begin by way of an update on Panama Canal. This is a picture again of the first LNG tanker from the U.S. to China. Uh, according to the uh, Panama Canal Authority, they expect as much as 35 million metric tons, notice how tons is spelled, per annum of LNG to pass through the canal. And of course, as a result of the larger uh, locks, it makes for the economic scale for this type of shipments to be uh, uh, positive. Also, it never goes without a problem. The locks, the locks, and the bollards delay use of the new Panama Canal locks. Given the new system, that is the old system, you had trains running alongside the ships. With this new uh, locks, what they've done is they will put two tugs, one uh, in front, obviously, with one in the back. But it appears that some of these uh, um, ships, particularly the larger ships, have not been properly um, installed with what are known as new chunks and bollards. Most of them will have to go through this new renovation of $100,000 to accommodate the use of tugs rather than the old system of locomotive, which they just will not be able to go through. Still, even with that renovation, 
it saves them a lot of money. Otherwise, they would have to go all the way down to Tierra del Fuego down in South America and then come up either on uh, the Atlantic or the Pacific side. That's by way of uh, an update. Tropical shipping commissioners, uh, the last meeting we mentioned that we will be providing you with updates. And here's one of the updates. Uh, on October 1st, we will have the Marine Department actually relocate to the fourth floor. It's approximately 12 tropical shipping employees. Again, they will be occupying the fourth floor at that part of the floor that is uh, uh, finished. Then, three weeks later, another approximately somewhere around 12 to 13 individuals, they will be occupying the second floor of this building. With regards to the new comp, uh, by the way, the actual new contract will be discussed later under G1 in this uh, agenda. So let us be the first to welcome profitable shipping employees to our new uh, new office space that they will be uh, taken care of. With respect to the contract and the negotiations and the actual contract, what I'd like to do is have Mr. Greg Pickin provide an update for the board. Greg Pickin, uh, Gary Dietrich, and Ryan Port Council. Uh, been working with uh, Glenn Kreiser, who's an attorney, uh, in house attorney with Trump, with Burzal. Uh, very nice fellow, good to work with. Uh, we have the uh, lease for the MOC space basically uh, basically finished. Like, there are a couple of small issues, but uh, we'll address the details on that uh, when that item comes up uh, later in the board meeting. Uh, We've been, I've been working with Paul and Jara on the uh, term sheet, and uh, we have some drafts of uh, a structure for the uh, 2018, uh, for what the deal will be from 2018 forward, what the deal is going to be now with regard to the MOB. Uh, not, not drafting the terms, that's already been approved by the board, but uh, trying to get a handle on some uh, you know, there have been a number of agreements over time, and we have to go back and see which ones continue, uh, will continue forward and, and, and draft the term sheet that the board, uh, draft the uh, documents pursuant to the term sheet that the board approved. Met with Paul, I, I have done some drafting, exchanged some drafts with Paul and Jera, met with them yesterday, and we have uh, two half-day sessions scheduled for next week. Uh, and uh, at that point, we're hoping that we would be able to send, uh, get a draft over to and it's a draft of the the not the least the, the lease for the fourth floor or the greater the, the lease the lease for the fourth floor is that's uh, that, that's done out there are a couple of uh, there uh, <coughs> there, I, I'm expecting a little input I've already gone back and forth with draft with, uh, with their council uh, we got him a last draft that I think yesterday or the day before, and I'm expecting that a, a couple of tweaks, but that's that's out of the way, essentially out of the way, and that's going to be addressed at the, uh, as an item on the agenda later this afternoon. Okay, the larger document that, that, that relates to the term sheet, which will carry us for, for 10 to 30 years out, Correct. please explain that, how do you foresee that going from a time, time perspective? Well, uh, as I said, we've already had some uh, drafts uh, with Paul and Jara and, and met with them on it. We're going to, the way I'm st structuring it is there's an, going to be a, uh, a draft of an agreement now that provides for the, uh, the takedown of the MOB, the payment that follows the term sheet. And when that, uh, when that happens, then in 2018, where, then there's going to be a separate agreement that would take us forward from 2018, assuming the angle MOB gets down, the payments are made, they exercise their uh, right that, uh, to, they have a right to reserve that space for themselves to have or sure. built in. Uh, and so there would be a, uh, a, what I'll call the 2018 amendment to the amenities and terminal agreement. And um, that will carry us forward. So that's going to be a ta an attachment to the agreement that we do now regarding the MOB. If all the MOBs, I will say stuff goes as planned, the payments are made, the port gets its grant, the permits are issued, and the work is done. Then when that's completed, the attachment 2018 also would go forward for the 10 years and, uh, and would 
the remedial period. Okay, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions from this board? <coughs> thank you, Mr. Pickens. All right, Commissioner Speak, continuing the Ports Master Plan. As I mentioned during our last meeting, it is my intention not only to bring a, a, an update on traffic, but also the process of the master plan. <coughs> And with that, uh, we continue to move forward in this process. And so, with the board, I'd like to have Casey come up and provide us an update on this uh, particular timeline. Hi, good afternoon, Casey well, CH2 and L. Um, as many said, the master plan is moving forward. Uh, we've um, provided the final drafts of the port's recommendations, at least at the staff level, related to the master plan and its updates to port staff. Uh, and we'll be reviewing those comments we're going to get week. Um, we're looking to provide the commissioners with a briefing, preferably in a workshop format within the next couple of weeks, to go over the details associated with the master plan and get your direction. Don't envision there needing to be more than one. After we get your comments, we can incorporate most and present most during the regular board meeting. Following that uh, workshop, we need to have a public meeting, and we're looking at having that probably the week following your workshop, and then giving you an update in your board meeting in October of the results of that public meeting, followed by another public meeting, and then moving forward towards any adoptions or any adjustments that are needed. Um, needing to get some kind of a formal adoption prior to the January 19th intake date. So uh, we were hoping to get something in November for a formal adoption. However, uh, we do have a little bit of flexibility going into December, even into an early January <coughs> board meeting for something along those lines. And then from there, the county process begins, um, stretching all the way out until July, and then into uh, December for final adoption. Very good. Any comments, questions? Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Casey. All right, moving on. I thought I was going to have additional information on this particular subject, but you know, I looked at the picture. I like it a little bigger. Let's keep it there. Let's move on. <laughs> Maybe next next month. Perhaps. Now, about uh, three weeks ago, I received a phone call from the Cuban Embassy up in Washington D.C informing me that Cuba is about to send a delegation to the United States of these individuals. First, the Director of Inland Waterways and Sea Transport, another individual representing the Office of Marielle Special Development Zone, that's the free trade zone in Port Marielle, the President of Warehouses Universales, which are also inside the U.S. Foreign Trade Zone, the Minister of Foreign Trade and Investment, and lastly, the Minister Councilor Embassy of Cuba. I've had an opportunity not only to mention it to the board members, but also to some of the leading executives of firms and companies throughout uh, Palm Beach County. Uh, there seems to be a great deal of interest, of course, from RBF. The idea would be for this, this delegation to come in, say, on a Sunday night, for example, and Monday have a whole issue, so have a whole uh, meetings coordinated so that they can meet and greet and possibly answer any questions uh, of you know, inquiries that uh, some of the people here in the U.S. are not very familiar with what goes on in, in Cuba. The Northern Palm Beach uh, Chamber of Commerce has already mentioned that it would be ideal for them to host a practice type of meeting, but it all takes on a close coordination, particularly with the Cubans, because they were supposed to be here this month, now they're telling me possibly October. Wait and see. Stay tuned. Let's see what they'll come back with uh, next week. The Port Charter update, of course, we had a uh, public hearing today. You notice that back on September the 8th, Commissioner uh, MacArthur and I went and visited the Revere Beach Council. Uh, it was nice to be there until about 10.30 at night, not because of our subject, but uh, our subject took about what, five minutes. Then, of course, this past Monday, Commissioner Richards and uh, a few of us attended the meeting at West Palm Beach. Uh, township, I was not able to attend, but I do believe that went very, very well. And, of course, today, the September 15th, the public hearing workshop. Commissioner, the next. Um, Speaking before you leave that, sure. For the record, I believe August fifteenth was the town of Palm Beach Shores, and our wonderful mayor is here. And I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I saw Singer Island that from the office. Yes, yeah. so that's the town of Palm Beach Shores. Oh, awesome. You're absolutely right. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for being here, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, moving on, please, um, Manuel. Um, 
I don't think it's necessary, but when we uh, made our brief presentation <coughs> to the city of River Beach, noted that uh, River Beach chairperson, uh, um, Terrence. Terrence Davis, asked us if we would have a, another uh, charter revision workshop in the city, preferably at the um, city hall, city chambers. He asked us to get in touch with um, Ms. Jones. Um, I, given our overwhelming interest in the meeting this afternoon, I don't think that's probably necessary, but I think we should still um, honor his request and contact Ms. Jones, and they may have lost interest, but if, um, if they really want that to take place, I think we should honor the request if we can. I, I, I assure you it would be a very short meeting. We need to take Mr. to lead to that. <laughs> One thing that we probably could do is you could contact the city manager and just to you know double check that they want to have it, or you could go over and give a presentation to you know to her or whoever would be interested. Sure. If that doesn't suffice, then we can. Uh, then we can send you. Exactly. I mean, who else would be the one to do it? <laughs> Well, then let's please follow up with that request. That's a valid request, and we should follow up with that. Thank you. And also, if we can possibly get a resolution from the city uh, with regards to that. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for that, 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 that opportunity. On the report, advance of course, commissioners, uh, coming up on September 17th, we have the port sponsor, International Coastal Cleanup, hosted by uh, E. Palm Beach County. Beautiful. And on September 26th, I encourage all to be a participant. We have the U.S. Coast Guard Miami sector captain here at the port. We're going to have a coffee and catch up. It's a monthly tenant meeting. Uh, she's gracious enough to accept our invitation. She will be here. And again, if you'd like to join us, please, by all means, all tenants have been made aware and there's a high level of interest. And also, Please, by uh, Port Events, Florida Ports Council, October 5th and 6th. This is where the allocations are going to be uh, made. Uh, and when I say the allocations, of course, this is the funding for the planned uh, construction and, um, and demolishing of the potential demolishing of the uh, MOB. That is coming up in the first week of October. It will be held in Miami. Also, the 150th APA Annual Convention in New Orleans, that will be from the 23rd through the 26th. While I'm in the region, I will uh, drive down to Port Fouchon to look at the natural gas loading facility in operation of that particular port. They have accepted my, my request to come in and take a look at it. And uh, I will be reporting back the pictures I've opened and certainly some sort of a video to see exactly what is the process and obviously ask a lot of questions. Next and last. And last but not least, good mention of the FRA. During the hazmat inspection, we reviewed registration, training records, and security plan, and reviewed the OTMA process. I have no idea what that is. But with no reportable defects. And that was a, basically a, 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 a inspection that no one knew that it was coming. So therefore, I congratulate Ken and his group for that outstanding uh, report. And Al's <laughs> out here. <laughs> <I'm really laughs> With that, commissioners, I don't think I have anything else. Yep. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Mr. Director. Seeing that, we will move on to the engineering report. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'd like to start off with the Army Corps of Engineers and have Jeff Fallon from the Army Corps of Engineers. He's our new representative to give an update on our maintenance strategy of our Mr. Fallon, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, as Mr. Lundin said, I uh, took the opportunity to come down here, introduce myself, uh, the new project <coughs> manager for the Jacksonville District uh, going forward. Um, I would like to uh, just kind of run through um, our current status with the dredging project, Excellent. as well as uh, give you a, a strategy for this year. Okay. Um, do we have the slide with the? I won't get that one. Um, 
basically right now we uh, our most recent survey that we've taken uh, which is our quarter four um, survey from July uh, there's only about 680 cubic yards of material that is within our dredging limits um, so as you can tell it's kind of a small amount you can see on the, the survey right there uh, for this year's event we're supposed to just um, dredge the main entrance channel you can see a little bit of finger shoaling towards the bottom of the uh, the bottom left of the picture there uh, in the channel it's, it's natural um, but it's still a really small amount so um, currently our plan is uh, to continue as as usual um, we are in the process of finalizing our engineering plans and specs um, they should be completed in November this year, um, certified, ready for award contract. Based upon the survey? Yes. And, um, however, our plan, because of this survey, having such small amount of material, we're going to have everything ready for award. If our next survey does not bring back more material from any sort of winter storms, we're just going to sit on it and be ready to award at a moment's notice as soon as we uh, get results. Okay. That's a concern because we know that the winter storms are the are the times that we have uh, difficulties. So I hate for you exactly. to move forward on this and not have the flexibility to take the November weather into account. That's yeah, exactly our plan. So we're going to have a another survey that's going to occur in November or December. Uh, we'll be able to see if there's anything changing, and then shortly after there, uh, January, February, we'll take one more survey to see if there was much of a change. Now, if there was not a winter storm that brought in a bunch of shoaling that would create any sort of concern, uh, we're gonna plan on just holding off completely and combining this year's event with next year's event. And what that'll do is it'll save us about $2 million of mobilization costs. And if we take that mobilization cost and, and combine it with next year's dredging event, we'll really be able to attack that uh, expanded settling basin as shown in that picture as well in the upper right area. Sounds like a great idea. And for the record, is Palm Beach still here? Yes. <coughs> it's very important that beach grade sand go to the town of Palm Beach. Right. Uh, that, you, need, you need to know that. Make sure you're on board with yes that. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. uh, sir. That's 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 part of our plan as well. If we can, um, uh, we've already been uh, talking with the town about the opportunity to potentially um, have a super event, basically combine this year and next year's and that will give us all the sand that we need to place in the near shore with the town's assistance we could place on the beach Thank as well. You. Okay, good. You yes. seem to be very much up to speed. Yes, sir. Yes. Any comments for Blair? Um, how, just, could you tell us a little about yourself? Have you been with for a while and your background? Um, I actually just started with the Jacksonville District uh, at, the, at the end of June, so I'm new to the Jacksonville District. However, uh, before that, I was in the Nashville district, in the, so I was doing inland navigation. We had the, uh, the Tennessee and Cumberland rivers up there. Um, and then during my time up in Nashville district, I deployed to Afghanistan at one point. Uh, so I got to work with the 101st Airborne and work on construction projects. And then I've also done a, uh, a six month tour at headquarters. So I got to see the headquarters side. Oh, good, well, welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Well, uh, yeah, we have Tim Murphy on the phone also. Oh, please. Tim, are you here? Yep. Tim? Maybe not. Uh, I'm here, sir. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, You're up. It's a little, uh, little out of offering. I, I, I'm hearing uh, rumors that uh, that Mr. Lundin may be, uh, may be moving on uh, to other things, and uh, I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank him personally. Uh, we talked on the phone, but I wanted to do it quickly. I uh, apologize for not being able to be there, but I'm over in Naples right now. That we're going to recognize one of our employees uh, for a, a career event tonight, and I apologize for not being able to be there face to face. Um, I appreciate Mr. Fallon coming up. Um, I do apologize for the, the fact that we had a, a, a pretty significant changeover of PMs uh, over the last three, four, five years, uh, but we continue to bring good quality people on board. And that necessitates you know, kind of readjusting everyone's workloads. Uh, but again, the, the recipe uh, for maintaining Palm Beach Harbor um, always remains the same. So uh, we continue to do well there. But I, I just have to, an opportunity to thank uh, Tom. Uh, again, we talked over the phone. Uh, Milan, if you're in the room, do you have the, 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 the commander's coin? Yes, Tim. I got it. Uh, and this is a, a pretty rare bear uh, because uh, commander's coins are designed to be given to federal employees. Uh, wherever um, we 
with special disposition, um, uh, that's a poor choice word on my part, uh, we were able to, to handle one out to Tom uh, because we considered him to be an honorary um, Jacksonville District employee. Uh, over his many, many years of working at Fort Tom Beach, I've worked with him personally. Uh, we saw numerous problems uh, and had problems, but we always come out with, with a good solution on it. And I just consider Tom to be a personal friend as well as an extremely professional colleague. Uh, he also advised me uh, personally during my time when I was at Jackson Ford Party. Um, and uh, I cannot thank Tom enough. I wish him the best of luck, uh, though he doesn't really need it um, in his future endeavors. And just want to thank him profusely for, for being such a good uh, sponsor to us. Um, that, that's both ways. I mean, it, it's Sean, we were talking about Commissioner Mastic's earlier. I mean, uh, sometimes you come up, you get a pat on the back, sometimes you get a kick in the pants, but it, it's appropriate uh, when Tom's done both. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of the Jacksonville District uh, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for, for Tom's service to us um, over his years of service. Thank you, Tom. Good, uh, good, good afternoon. With, with that, it is always a, an, an honor and a privilege to address the board. I appreciate you guys allowing me to do it over the phone. Uh, just thank you very much for your willingness. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman, Commissioner, uh, or staff. So I'm trying to, my name is Malan Moore, and I'm the new second chief. I work under Tim and uh, Jeff Fallon's boss. And I'm going to try to do the best to be the colonel. As he says, these are handed out by the colonel. And he usually starts out with, uh, the writing on the, on the coin, it says, Team of Professionals Making Tomorrow Better. That's what the Jacksonville is uh, to us. Obviously, Jacksonville District, and it's got Florida, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Uh, that's our area of responsibility. And it's got a dredging. It's got a very familiar with dredging. And it's got an egret, and that's the other side of, of, the, of the world, which uh, Ever River Dyke and the uh, uh, Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Program. As such, uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Tom, just two words. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on, I'd like to have Karen Brandon come up and give the uh, first of the Welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. Karen Brandon with AECOM. Uh, the progress activities, um, I got pictures. Uh, they've been installing the turbidity and sediment controls, and they've also received their NPDES construction permit from DEP. They're doing some uh, existing asphalt and concrete pavement demolition. This is a picture of one of the raker piles that are going to be installed. They've also been doing some electric trenching. Um, the new crane that was uh, put together recently this past week, um, installing sheet piles. They just started driving sheet piles yesterday. I believe they had eight installed by the end of the day yesterday. We've also been doing coordination with Florida Sugar on maintenance of traffic and also uh, with FPNL on the pole removal and transformer removal and relocation, as well as relocating a trailer for tropical. To be. be happy to answer any questions. Uh, no questions, but I will note that um, uh, our staff recently brought me up to speed, and, and I'm very impressed with how we are protecting the environment. Uh, it, it seems to be a, a double redundancy. Would you just explain that a little, a little more, please? You're uh, talking about the sediment? Yes, we have an exterior barrier as well as an interior. Yes, there's the turbidity curtain that goes out in the waterway itself yes. for any turbidity um, from the construction activities that are on the water side. And then they also can put up silt fences that protect any sediment from leaving the upland area and going into the waterway itself. And as well as filter fabric and all the inlets to protect any other um, materials from entering the the stormwater system. All right, thank you very much. Welcome. With that, commissioners, the remaining uh, bond funds that we have to spend down is now down to $2.9 million. We have three more pay applications to, to go, and we will be, they should be getting about a million dollars in pay applications. 
so I don't see that it's going to be a, a problem spending those funds. Uh, the next item is the annex property. Like that piece, long give that update. Again, Casey Long, um, Tom and I uh, met uh, recently with Jeff Gagnon. shake this thing through. Um, in the discussions that uh, we've had with Jeff, um, he indicated some adjustments he'd like us to make in the type of zoning and the type of uh, land use that we were proposing and what he'd like us to move towards. And they seemed very accommodating and something that the court would be interested in. We are now currently awaiting his direction as uh, he needed to push that through his executive management and to get an approval on his side as to whether or not those adjustments um, can be made. Uh, as soon as we get those words, we'll make the changes and get it back in the system. We're hoping to get on the October board meeting um, with the uh, Planning and Zoning Committee. However, it's all contingent upon hearing back from the city and the ample time to make the adjustments. Yeah, I would, as you know, with all most governments, that shows some some backlog, if you will, and to get on the October P and Z, which is second of the third week, you, you, and you, you need to get in pretty much any day now. So you might want to just. Push and push and push. We, we heard back from him today that you know he's, he's feeling confident. Uh, however, he needs to get formal work, uh, but he is communicating with us and keeping us in touch. He's a tough guy. Thank he's you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Tropical, did you hear that? Okay, thank you. Glad to see both of you. Thank you for being here. For my last item, the environmental and geotechnical services consulting contract, we get seven firms submit <coughs> proposals on that. Tomorrow morning, we're going to have a public meeting. Uh, the approval of the shortlist will happen over in, in, uh, at the October board meeting, and then presentation will be done and will be done at the November board meeting. Commissioners, that's all I have. Mm. You want to drop a mic, Tom? Hey, hey. Okay. Nope. okay, thank you. Okay, great job. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we will now proceed to government affairs. I don't believe there's a report today. No, we didn't answer any questions, but. I think we're, I think we're good. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support on the um, charter change meetings. We'll move to old business, the Birdsall Tropical Maritime Office Complex. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, for this item, first I would just like to thank Tropical Shipping for their commitment to work with port staff and negotiations not only for this lease, but for the lease that we are working on with our attorney, Greg Picken. Um, the Maritime Office Complex Office Lease truly is the first part of a long time uh, agreement. Uh, the initial <coughs> agreement, uh, this is a five year with a five year option renewal. Um, the other agreement that will come before you will be a 10 year with options, uh, but moving forward, um, those leases will provide the court in those initial 10 years seven million dollars in new revenue so we're really looking forward to bringing that that next agreement before you and and we will do that expeditiously uh, with Greg and, and with Tropical's attorney this agreement that you have before you is a combination of two floors 26 a little over 2600 square feet on the fourth floor and a little over 1600 square feet on the second floor the base rate for the, that that footage is twenty dollars per square foot that includes all utilities as well as CAM. It is a very good rate. It includes 26 parking spaces and the addition, the opportunity to add two additional as they increase their staff for this area for their Marine Department, as Executive Elmira indicated earlier. They currently are on a month to month until we get the agreement finalized. Although, as Greg mentioned earlier, um, there's just a few housekeeping items. We feel confident with the uh, authority to have Mr. Elmira execute with Mr. Pickens' 
uh, final approval in the agreement, we can get this finalized for October 1. Uh, just so you know, Tropical is paying the current rent back from October 1 as they would pay as if they were currently in the building. Um, you mentioned a couple of items that Mr. Pickens mentioned that earlier as well. Mr. Pickens, are these, are the, are the remaining items of, of minor that have not yet been I would out? consider them minor, yes. And they do not need to come before your, for this board in your estimation? I, 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 I would feel comfortable with them not coming back this board, but we always, uh, I we always bring it back for ratification. When, okay. when we handle sure. things in the matter that, uh, that we're proposing they be handled, where Mr. Alvera uh, resolve uh, any final issues, uh, we always bring it back for ratification. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ms. Casuera. Um, so this is a five year with one five year renewal, 86,000 a year, so close to $500,000. Roughly, what is the build out? And I, I'm just curious, what, is the, what do we anticipate spending on the build out? Right now, we, 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 we've just issued a request for qualifications for the build out for the remaining raw space for the fourth floor. So at this time, we have no estimate on that. We do expect or re re qualifications back, and I think Casey Long has the date on that. It, if I, uh, sure. Well, obviously, I mean, we, 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 we want to work with and we're going to work with and with Tropical. I, I would like to know we're spending, we're, the income we're going to receive is X. What do we anticipate putting out initially? If I could clarify that, though, for, for just a moment, the, the agreement that we're asking for approval for today has nothing to do with the build out of the fourth floor. The agreement does give the okay. port the opportunity to relocate them down down the, down the road if and when we would like to. So this particular space is built out? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Clean, clean, thank you. The port has the option to, under this agreement, the port will have, have the option to build out I additional space yeah. on the fourth floor and uh, and then the they combine them, but the, the rate will be. I mean, you will at that point. Sure, take that, we take that into account. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Uh, are there any comments or questions regarding this item or a motion? Um, make a motion to um, approve the proposed lease agreement with Tropical Shipping and for final execution by the executive director. Second. Motion has been made and seconded by Commissioner Mastix. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Sure, thank you. G2, cell tower proposals. Commissioners, previously the board gave approval for staff to issue the RFP for proposals. We received five proposals and we have reviewed those. The committee has looked at those. All five companies met the minimum requirements. In your board materials, uh, you will see that there were five financial proposals, all of which had different um, elements to the port. Uh, we are, however, recommending Vertex Development LLC today. Um, it was, in fact, it, did, it had the highest financial impact to the port, and I will go over that in a moment. Uh, there is a sample of a pole, a, a cell tower pole, if you'll look um, at your screens, that will give you some idea. There's a very small footprint that they need for this cell tower pole. Part of the reason that we asked for the RFP was because AT&T uh, currently, and for a very long time, has had a rooftop lease on the MOB. And moving forward, uh, not knowing the uncertainty of the MOB, we weren't really prepared to move forward with the cell tower lease, but I think at this time, um, it's a good idea. And the, this particular financial proposal uh, would provide $28,200 annually with a 3% annual increase. In addition to that, once the tower is constructed, 30 days prior, I mean 30 days following that, the port would receive a $15,000 one-time fee. And that is guaranteed. Now, following that, once, once the, the manager of the tower is able to secure tenants to the tower, whether that be AT&T, Verizon, or any other cell tower company, 
second cell tower company that is located on the tower, the port would then receive fi another $15,000 lump sum fee. The second tenant would be $750,000 a month. The $750. $750, $750 a month, excuse me. <laughs> Tough negotiator. Third tenant would be another $750 a month, and then the fourth tenant would be $1,000 a month. So I'm asking today, well, first I'm recommending Vertex development, and I'm asking today that we have your permission to move forward to negotiate a contract with them. And in the event we cannot, I ask that we move to the second rank proposal Poser, which is uh, Madison Communications. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public that wish? I do not have a card. I, I, are there any members of the public that wish to speak on this? Hearing none, we'll close this from uh, public discussion and we'll go to the board. Yes, Commissioner. Okay. Um, Chair, how much are we currently earning on the uh, MLB? Uh, AT and T gives us. $31,740 annually. And the guaranteed revenue with no tenants on this tower would be 31906 Okay. Is there a motion, Commissioner? Um, where will this physically be located if it works? This, this area is a piece of grass. Mm -hmm. Currently, there's nothing on it. There's not truly much you can do with it. It sits between a molasses tank and a roadway. Can, do we need a, a permit from the city of River Beach on this? Sure. Yes, sir, we will. And this particular company, Vertex, will do all of the permitting for that. Thank you. I would make a motion to uh, uh, let's <coughs> approve the staff recommendation to negotiate with Vertex Development for a shell tower lease with final appro agreement approval by legal counsel and execution by the executive director. A motion has been made and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, none. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We'll now proceed to G3, Port of Palm Beach, employee handbook. Commissioners, at our August board meeting, an updated employee handbook was presented for your approval. At that time, you chose to defer approval, requesting that you be provided a different, different additional information regarding employee paid time off. During the past month, that information was provided and answers were provided to you based upon the questions that were asked. The updated employee handbook is again being presented to you for your approval without any changes from the last month's submission. Uh, Port management res respectfully requests approval of the Port of Palm Beach handbook. Manny, does this say two and a half or two? Manuel, two and a half. This would put us at parity with the union. Last month, well, <laughs> uh, last month this was presented and it brought up the whole PTO issue, um, and we we brought it they brought it back and it has the same item so that management and non-management or union non-union would have up to two and a half times uh, paid PTO when they leave, which uh, I'll let others speak for. Uh, Um, I don't have a problem with what we are, what we currently do, and the reason why is because we cannot have the union doing one thing and our staff doing another. It's really not fair. So we need to make sure that what we're providing for the union, we also provide for our staff. And we have a very small staff, but we have good staff. And we haven't had any problems over the years, so why should we try to go and change it? And that's with it now because we have hard working men and women. They're here when we need them. They work extra time, they work long hours. And if we go in and try to change something that's not broken, it doesn't make any sense. But we need to do whatever we uh, offer the union. I would like to see us do the same for our staff and just go forward. And I would like to, you know, us to make any changes. But that's my personal opinion. And I think that. Uh, our staff has done things that no other staff would have done under the circumstances. When we need them, they're always here. So I think we need to continue to do what we're doing, reward them, but then make them the same and not change it. 
but make give our staff the same opportunity, and if we're giving the union something, then the staff should have the same, and we'll be okay. Now, that's my opinion. And that's yeah. my Any other comments? Please. I'd just like to thank staff for getting us all this information. I think on page, I don't know, I know the public doesn't have page numbers, but on 424, there's a comparison of the Port of Palm Beach with a variety of other governmental entities in and around the area. And the um, comparison is very accurate and we're very much similar to everyone else. I think it's a wonderful um, job. And, um, you know, when I was HR director, we have a very small staff, very dedicated staff. And when you have a very small staff, it only takes one thing to go wrong to throw a monkey wrench into everything. I think we gotta really appreciate how good our staff is and how hard they work. It's not like, um, you know, I hate to say this, but it's not like Palm Beach County where you have 3,000 employees and you could have a few that aren't doing what they need to be doing and no one notices. In the Port of Palm Beach, if anyone's not doing what they need to be doing, it causes instant problems. And I'd just like to uh, thank staff and thank B for all her work on this. And I see Al Fawcett back there. I'm glad he is as uh, supportive also. And I'd like to meet with people. I'll have a comment before we, uh, we move on. Um, second. Any motion made and probably seconded comments? Comment. Um, throughout, the, throughout the discussions over the last three years, I've been very big on, I, I came to the realization that we were not, in my mind, our, our employees were underpaid. So I have been working with staff for the last three years to bring forth to this body, let's get these salaries up. It's been a constant ma mantra, mantra of mine, let's get these salaries up, we need to pay them more. But it's a phenomenal staff. We don't. We have a, we have limited employees. They, the number of employees go down every year. Literally, at one point we're at 63. We're at, you know, every year it goes down, but they do more. Profits are going up, and I'm extremely pleased that the union and management are on one accord. In my recent discussions with the union, the union actually lobbied on behalf of management, which is phenomenal. That's we like that. Yeah, we like that. As a person with fiduciary responsibilities, I believe this board should make sure that we're paying our employees enough and that their time off is, is consistent with industry. I did mention to Manny yesterday that I'm officially, I'm okay with the, the PTO as it stands. I don't want staff worrying that we're gonna try, I'm gonna try anything retroactively I suggested that we have a steady done, probably in January, of incomes. Incomes probably need to go up. Incomes probably need to go up. This staff, I'm looking at these people here, they're great. They're not good, they're great. And we don't have the drama or lack of uh, commitment that other places may have. I, I, I don't support doing things piecemeal. I will not vote for this. I will vote for higher salaries year after year. I will vote for a study to make sure we're paying sufficient. I'm not going to bend over and just give management two and a half times. I, I told management, they really need, we need to do the study. I mean, if you're a 10 or 11 year employee, you probably have 30 something, maybe 40 something, you have, you have 30 something days. Two and a half times, you're going to leave here with 90 days? Of, you're going to get paid for 90 days? That's not smart. That's not meeting our obligations. It may be tough to do a study, but let's do a study. Why would we increase the benefit while we're pushing hard to increase salaries? Let's look at this. But if this board and if staff wants to push it on the agenda and this board wants to approve it, so be it. Yes, sir. Um, I thought there was a, a limit of 43 days when you just bought it. And like me, can you put, put up your own? Hang on one second, commissioners, please. Get the wings down the stack. Now, there are five days in a week, five paid days. So that's, that's too much.
there you can see it's uh, total days after five years of employment is 41 days, same as Port Canaveral, one lower than Palm Beach County, same as Broward County, City of West Palm Beach, Revere Beach is 38, Bank of America 38, and Pressburg, which is hospice, is 40. It's the best comparison that we can come up with. Now, we have, I've had the liberty, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Commissioner, you, you were you were talking about it. I was just yeah. trying to, Paul was going to answer my question, I think. Uh, I, I, I understand this, but my question was what Wayne was saying about Carry 90 up. days versus I thought it was 43. Well, it's two and a half times. Yeah. I need to clarify something, if I may. If you are comfortable with the number of days that people are eligible for the PTO, whether it's two or two and a half, it truly doesn't matter. The people accrue those days, we are obligated to pay those days, they're expensed that days. All it really, well the only difference it is, is that I don't have to take them this year. I can hold off and take them next year or get paid for them. It does not cost the port another nickel, doesn't cost them anything more, the employee has earned that money. All it does is allow the employee to carry it forward. So it's not gonna increase our expenses, if I'm eligible for 41 days this year, the port will pay 41 days to me. Now, if I don't take them, that money goes into the, the balance sheet and comes out later. So there's no increase in expense. The only risk, and I'm going to lay it on the table, the only valid risk is as somebody accumulates that, and if they're early in their career, later in their career, it's a higher rate of pay. But every organization faces that. And whether it's two years or two and a half, it's not going to amount to a lot of money. So unless you're going to adjust the number of days, there is no financial impact to the board. Is there, is there a cap, though? I mean, it's, two, it's two and a half. Two and a half. If you're eligible for 41 days, it would be two and a half times that, which would be, give me a quick, 82, about 100 days you'd be able to be paid for. That would be it. Anything else you do lose? This is my, my, my final comment on it, which is my colleagues. The reason you need to do a study, and, and I don't want to beat this up, but Bank of America, sick days, 10. So if I'm a Bank of America employee, I can just take 10 sick days every year and work every year? No. But at the port, yes, you'll get paid for it. Because it's called PTO. I don't say I'm sick. I'm taking Friday off. I'm not going to tell you I'm sick. I'm not going to tell you I'm going skiing. It doesn't matter. It's my pay time off. But if I'm in Bank of America, you have 10 there. Is it okay if I take 10, if I take the first of the 10th off every January? Hey, January 1st of 10th, I'm you, getting paid, I don't no, mind. No. It's not apples to apples. You accrued. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that, that's not an issue, I'm, I'm not, yeah. In other words, you have 10 days here for Bank of America with pay. So if I take off September 1st of the 10th at Bank of America, every year they know that, I'm sick. Pay me for it. I won't be there. Come on, guys. That's why you do a study. You but you put it in that that's offensive. I'm not sure, Commissioner, if I may. I'm not sure what it is you want to see in the study. A study to compare what? I, I you don't put Bank of America here and put ten sick days and show thirty eight and make me feel good. We only put that's not that's not legitimate. Those aren't ten sick days I can take every year. But at the port, I'm able to take it. And no one question because it's called pay time off. If you see if I understand this correctly, you're saying that Bank of America, you're not allowed 10 days? Is that what you're saying? You are allowed 10 days, but whether you take them or not, it's up to you. When you, you work when you work in private industry, yeah. you don't just say, I have the 15 paid days, sick days, I'm going to take it every year. You don't have a job. But you're counting it here. Our PTO is, as a matter of right, we don't question it. I can take every Monday off, up to my PTO, and it's fine. But at Bank of America, bereavement, or really sick, or what have you, I, I better not say, hey, every September 1st to 10th, I'm taking my 10 sick days. No, I want to have a job. Here, that, it's not as a matter of right. You use it if you need it. But here, it's as a matter of right. It's called paying time off. God, I'm not going to beat this up much further. No, but then what would you do with the uh, labor union? Are you going to take that off of them as well? I didn't think so. So, no. therefore, I I'm okay with a negotiated contract that we're that we have mm -hmm. with having that i'm going to handle each and every piece on its own merit and i will not blame
blanket and say, I made a right decision. I, I would not do that. No, I would look at each item on its own merit and make tough decisions. Just one last thing. Yeah, I agree with Wayne in a certain part of that because, I, you know, I don't want to see people start taking Monday and Fridays off because they can just do that every week now because they have a lot of sick days. So they're just every week they're going to work three or four days a week. Well, I give it to them. Well, that's they can work it. You would not do that. You exactly. Would have. Same as where I work. So I agree with Wayne. We need to look this over in January. Let's just go ahead and pass it. But then again, um, that's my concern is that people are going to be working two or three day weeks and taking, you know, they've accumulated a lot of this and maybe they're entitled to it, but it's going to be a detriment if they start only working three day weeks. I guess my problem is that we've never had staff to take all those days off. Point. We've no. never had it. Well, I mean, pay for it. we will. I I know that, but you have to think about it. You don't want to see a report that in the month of December everybody's gone because they have TVs and all this stuff. They they've always been here for us, you know. And I, and I every time I think about this, I think about Tom Lundin because he was an engineer and. He did extra stuff. I mean, all the diving that he saved us, millions of dollars on his own time and dying. You know, other ladies who stay all these nights. So what I'm saying is that I think whatever we do for the union, we should do for our staff. I don't see them taking advantage of us. If we see that, then it's a different animal. But it's not broken on fit I don't like for us to just um, keep the keep everything the way it is and just make sure that our staff and management is in line with the union and go for it. Then as far as the study, if you want to do one later on, but I think we should just go on because we don't have these problems. I mean, you're bringing up things that have never occurred at the port since I've been here to my tenure. So maybe something's going to happen different, but I don't see it now. Maybe you said, you um, see almost on the nature of the workers at Bank of America do not require them to be here at 3 o'clock in the morning or spend the whole night waiting for that ship to come in here. We have that, and staff was more than willing to be here. No questions asked. They knew this was their job, and we made it work. I'm asking the board to please reconsider. Do not have two styles of two different types of, of uh, combination here. Is there a motion to I'd just like to point out one thing. I agree with everything that's said. I think we should move forward. I think we, if we want to do a study, I think this year is the year to do it. But I'd like to point out, um, PTO, when employees, and we did have some employees who um, took adv full advantage of PTO, but they did so at their own risk and at their own peril because PTO is sick leave and annual leave. If you use it for annual leave, when you get sick, you're cut. We had employees at the port who had to take leave without pay because they, when they got sick, because they had exhausted their PTO. <coughs> when I was in Washington, I had major surgery. It was because I had sick leave that I could pay my mortgage. If I had not had sick leave, I would have been in a terrible situation. So I mean, PTO only people that don't understand abuse their PTO because it's a safety net, and that's what it's designed for. And with that, I would just again make a motion to approve it. A motion? Is there a second? I thought you already. I second it. I thought you already said it. Okay. Yeah, I second. Second. This is under discussion. It was in a motion has been made and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries 4 to 1. Thank you. Good discussion. Thank you. We will proceed. I do. Welcome, Stephen Schwack. Stephen Schwack, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. I will proceed to each one. Each one. On August 17, 2016, the port conducted a budget workshop where the proposed fiscal year 2017 operating, renewal, and replacement and capital budgets were presented for discussion. The proposed renewal and replacement budget and the proposed capital budget were accepted without any requested changes are included tonight for your approval unchanged from that workshop. 
the discussions of the operating budget culminated with the board requesting that four adjustments be made to it before being considered for approval. The executive director's salary was increased and was raised by 1.5, raised from 1.5 to 3%. The board authorized a change in health insurance providers to United Healthcare. The executive director proposed and the board accepted the elimination of one full-time position. Finally, the board authorized our dental insurance to be awarded to MetLife. Together, these changes have increased the board's budgeted net income by over $140,000 to slightly over $1.5 million in fiscal year 2017. If there are no other requests for changes, tonight I ask the board to adopt the 2017 operating budget, to adopt the 2017 renewal replacement budget, to adopt the 2017 to 21 capital budget, to authorize the business development budget to be at 4.8% of prior year revenues in lieu of 5%, and to adopt the resolution approving the 2017 budgets. Thank you. Is there a motion or discussion and or motion? So motion to approve. Second. Do we need to read those in the record or can we say what Paul just read for us? That's fine. Second. A motion has been made and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, Port of Palm Beach Union contract. Uh, a proposed contract with the National Association of Government Employees has been tentatively agreed upon, uh, thanks in large part to the excellent performance of our union employees and their union president, Alan Fawcett, and Vice President Kuma Payne. Uh, the proposed contract was presented to the union members for ratification uh, at the, uh, prior to this meeting and was approved. Uh, the proposed contract covers three years, uh, October 1st through September 30th, uh, 2019. Uh, some of the highlights is the creation of a labor management committee, uh, we'll, which will meet periodically to address any uh, personnel issues or union issues uh, that, are, that may arise throughout the year, which is, I think is a wonderful thing. Uh, we're also removed, uh, we have a removal of the $1,500 cap on the insurance deductibles. Uh, what we've all recognized is that the Port Commission uh, works very hard uh, to make sure that excellent benefits are provided to the uh, employees. And, you know, we would hate to run into a situation where a deductible was $1,501 and we weren't able to do it because of the uh, requirements of the contract. We're also uh, in agreement for a 3% increase each year for the next three years. Uh, we did an adjustment to the purchase uh, procedure for safety shoes. I know that some of them have closets full of safety <laughs> shoes. It's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been an authority buy side for 15 years. Uh, so I was going after those shoes. Uh, and then with employees over 500 hours of PTO, um, they receive reimbursement of up to uh, 40 hours annually. Comments? Well, we had a, uh, actually a couple this real well. I, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, the negotiations went real well. It's, it's nice to, um, you know, to, to work with Ken and all the staff. They, we had no issues. I mean, this one, anything that came up that, you know, we were able to meet in the middle of the road and um, and resolve it. And I'm really happy with this contract. And, and I think uh, we did well. And I thank staff and I thank Kuma for helping me. And Alan and Kuma, we sincerely, sincerely, sincerely appreciate the efforts of uh, <coughs> working men and women here. Um, other places you hear, well, I'm in the union, I can only do this. I haven't heard that here. I've seen you guys literally doing whatever it takes to get the job done in Port of Palm Beach. So we're very, very, very happy with that. And we're happy that you guys are pleased. That, 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 that's it. That's great all around. So thank you. Mr. Sigmund, you were going to say something. Uh, I was just going to say I'm glad everything worked out and uh, I've been working with Al for years and years. He's a fair guy and, and I'm just glad it went so easy this time. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right, great. Please. And I'd just like to say the same thing. I worked with Al many times and 
he was an asset to the court and to management. And I uh, just have, not that I doubt Ken or Al, that Kuba, is it all right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Kuba says it's all right, it's all right. Great. Is there a motion? Is there a motion on the floor? Yes. Is there a motion, please? So a motion has been made and probably seconded to approve the uh, union contract. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion charge unanimously. Just one more comment for the uh, record commissioner. Uh, Al Fawcett is also our trainee. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've got us a uh, excellent report. Yeah. From the FRA. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to have our training master uh, come out and talk to us about the training. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he doesn't even let me blow the horn on the train. But I do ask for the things 
that we all need. I hope that it is still on the books, that the court will continue to work in beautification of the car. We know that all the board is coming. I've stated here prior last year about the improvements of your, of your belongings here that incorporates the community outside of your area here. So we still would like to have that done. Your marquee out there, the landscape, and I may mention about that before. I do not know whether or not you all are still, you know, putting it on the back burner until all of this with the road out there is being done. But just to make sure that is, it is still on the books, that Ms. Brown is still re requiring that the port be good neighbors and they work with the city as well as the residents. I thank you and may you all have a good evening. And as always, I say, be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Long. Thank you. 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 September 4th mar marked my 20th uh, anniversary with the G and Jensen and CH2 Mill Group. And I, I found thinking about that sitting here, you know, Commissioner Mastix, you've been here for as long as I've been here. And uh, I, I've learned a lot. And, Really wanted to thank you personally for, for your service and your leadership and mentorship. And then also my, my good friend Tom Levine. For many years we worked together uh, side by side through a lot of stuff and uh, didn't miss having you around. I appreciate your leadership. I've learned a lot from you. <laughs> I had hair back then. <laughs> and, and you had some black in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> but just wanted to personally thank you guys publicly as well uh, for, for everything you guys have done uh, for me personally and also for, for our firm. Thank you for teaching me all that I've learned. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. We don't, we don't make care jobs. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, uh, we'll go to the board now. We'll start with Commissioner Masses. Any comments? Commissioner Masses. I, uh, I'm going to start with Commissioner Masses. Thank you. Thank you. I've heard so many wonderful things about me. I have nothing to add. <laughs> 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 It's been a great ride, and uh, I spent many years in politics, either being elected or appointed or <coughs> whatever the position. It's always been a pleasure. I always felt honored to be able to do these things. I'm going to regret that uh, the opportunity is not going to continue uh, and that I will have either another place to go some people would say tell me a little I'll tell you where to go <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I uh, it's been a wonderful ride this is a great port everybody here is friendly honest, decent. But nobody here, when I'm, when I'm around everybody, I never feel like I, I got somebody here who's a crook or, no really, uh, I feel that everybody here is honest and noteworthy, praiseworthy, and actually it's been it's been a great ride for me to serve here on this port with all of you folks. Because each of you are especially talented, especially deserving to be where you are now and doing what you're doing. This is really quite, quite a port. And uh, the honors that each of us have to serve the community through this port. It's, it's hard really to, to appreciate the, uh, the, the greatness this port has, that the great people who are here, uh, we, could, we could probably make all kinds of great speeches and everything. I don't like to do that because the port speaks for itself. And all of you folks 
chair. Boy, that's, that's really a privilege. And, uh, and I look around here and I see these faces of people who I consider my friends. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna miss being around here uh, on a monthly basis. That doesn't mean you're gonna get rid of me. <laughs> but uh, it's been wonderful. And uh, keep it up, you guys. You're doing a great job. The court is just, people just don't realize how great this sport is. Whether it's Maddie <laughs> or uh, all of you guys. Uh, you all know what you're doing. You do it well. You don't get any, you know, in the face of the next guy. Uh, it's just a great place to be. And I am honored to, to serve for this period of time. And I have had many jobs, many political positions. Some paid a lot of money, some didn't. Can say that this was not my high paying job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yet it's it's been a real pleasure. And I want to thank all of you for helping me to help you. Thank you. So George, I'm gonna be quick. Um, first thing, um, George, you're not going anywhere. You'll be around for the next three months, and even in January. So, I mean, I'm not going to start crying. Yeah, you're really. Oh, no, we're not going to. Um, I just want to say thank you, George, and also thank you, Mr. Lundin. Um, I just want to say that many of you might not know, and when I voted on the um, um, the benefits pageant, pageant, um, package for the staff, I, I thought about Tom Lundin and many other people because Tom is an excellent engineer, but he has also provided so many extra hours, diving and money that the poor did not have to spend. We ended up with more than just an engineer with Tom Lundin. We ended up with, I don't know, a shop? Yeah. <laughs> his eyes open down to make sure that um, uh, slip three was done well. And then Tom also served as the acting executive director too. He served in that role. So Tom has really been a part of the port. And I hate to see you go. I mean, I really do. If there's something I can do to make you stay, I would do it. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna, you know, you would accept it. But um, I just wanna thank you for your years of service. And I'm gonna miss you. I don't know, I guess they will too, but I'm really gonna miss you. And, um, we look forward to seeing you come and visit us. Um, that's about it. Oh, one other thing. When we had our last meeting, uh, I talked about the, um, the, um, what was it? Uh, the dinner work, and I do agree uh, with, the, with the dinner plan. Uh, I had not received a package, and, you know, so it's fine. Uh, but uh, we love you, Tom. Good to see each other. <coughs> and thank you, staff, for all that you do. And I um, had to vote on the plan with you because I know the hours you work here. I mean, I get calls from Mr. Mirror all kinds of times, and I know you don't like to talk to me because a lot of times I run my mouth and talk about everything. But he calls all the time and says, "Hey, I'm up here, Commissioner. I'm doing this." And so I would, I, I don't want to have you in a tight rope where you feel uncomfortable. I want you to be willing to work for us and do extra and bring extra to the port. And that's for all our employees, and I love you. Commissioner, I don't think I can top that. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say um, I am humbled and honored to have been associated with two fine men, Commissioner Masters and Tom Lundy. It is a, I wish I could do to achieve your stature, your integrity, your credibility, and uh, it's just been an honor. And I wish you all both the very, very best, and, and particularly Tom. No offense, George, but I hope the Gators kick ass. <laughs> <laughs>
Richard. Yes, I, I, I've already said uh, how I felt about George, and Tom knows how, how I feel about him, and, and hopefully downstairs I'll get to talk to him a little bit, both of them, and uh, express some personal thoughts. So I appreciate all they've done for us, and uh, I'll certainly speak to you guys at our little party. Um, thanks again, George. Tom, wow, wish you the best. Um, you sold me a lunch. No problem. That one year? That one year? That one time? I paid up all the other ones. Okay, well, in that case, in that case uh, I'd like to take you to lunch. Thank you for all your service. Many, 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 many years. Thank you. Our next meeting, I believe, is October 20th. Yeah, uh, Manny, you want to mention what's happening downstairs? Please. Yes, I do. Uh, we have a little surprise. There's no longer surprise on for George Masters. And we'll see you down there, Commissioner Masters. We invite everybody to come downstairs and in just a little bit. Yes. First floor. Yeah. Yes, first floor. Maybe Commissioner Masters the well, Mr. Madison, would you make a motion to adjourn? I make a motion, regrettably, that we adjourn and uh, that it's just a short period of time. Okay. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you.